Okay, so now let's look um, into one example for naive Bayes in R. Um, the example that we're going to be um, looking into is basically the design of a spam filter using a naive Bayes classifier. Um, we're we're going to be working with a data set called SMS spam. It's a CSV file, and that CSV file has SMS samples. Um, for each SMS, we'll have a label indicating whether that SMS text um, is spam or not spam. As you will see, the way this data set um, classifies a non-spam, they assign the label ham. Okay, but ham meaning that it's not a spam SMS. And so the naive base classifier that we will build today will try to given an SMS the text for an SMS, which are you know short text messages. Given that short text message, can we predict whether that's a spam SMS or a real like non-spam SMS? That's our objective for the example that we're gonna cover today. As you can imagine, with you know all the theory that we have explained, what's going to happen internally in this naive base classifier is that the model is going to learn what's the probability that different words are associated to a spam message, what's the probability that these words are associated to a non-spam message, and then based on those probabilities, it will output whether it's considered a spam or non-spam message. Um, we're also going to be using a lot of libraries um, related to natural language processing, and that's the reason why I picked this example, because I think that it also gives an interesting overview of the different libraries that you can use in R to process text, in case you are also interested in learning that skill. And so we will be seeing a lot of different libraries that we need to use to prepare the SMS texts so that we can actually learn something significant, okay? And you'll see how we'll process the text messages to separate words, to uh, remove uh, words that might not be important to learn, and so on. So, you know, besides learning how to train and test an IBIS classifier, we're also going to be learning a lot of, you know, different libraries to be able to process and clean text in R. And I think that that will also be interesting. Just to formalize the general idea of what we're trying to do, given an SMS that has n different words from W1 to WN, uh, we know that the SMS will be classified as a spam if um, the probability of um, certain words appearing in the spam SMSs multiplied by the probability of the spam is actually larger than the probability of those words appearing in ham messages or non-spammy messages multiplied by the probability of it being ham. Okay, this is precisely the definition of what a naive base classifier is. And again, we assume we can assume independence of these attributes. Um, then we can basically solve the probability, the conditional probabilities in blue. Um, expressed here can be solved, you know, by the product of individual probabilities. Um, again, um, bear in mind that for this case, assuming independence of attributes is a really extreme assumption because generally words tend to appear next to each other with given pro with certain probabilities. And so here we are making a, a big assumption. In any case, we'll show that even with that assumption, the classifier works um, pretty well. Before delving into the example, because we are going to be working with text, I wanted to give a high level um, overview of the different steps that will, of the three main steps that we'll go through. Okay, um, the first thing, obviously, um, retrieve the, the file, and uh, you will need to read the SMSs from that file. You will see what I'm showing here is just two examples of those SMSs, but basically you will have a label stating whether whether it's ham or spam, and then the SMS message itself. Because the final objective is to compute the probabilities of every single word associated to a spam or a ham message, we obviously need to isolate those individual words. However, as you can imagine, uh, in the SMSs we will have um, uppercases and lowercases, we will have numbers, we will have stop words, punctu punctuations, uh, we will have blank spaces. And so in order to identify unique words, we will need to clean or transform the text in various ways. For example, removing uh, stop words, words that appear, that appear extremely frequently, like to or and or I because, I mean, those won't be necessary to model. Uh, putting everything in lowercase, we don't want to have the same word in uppercase and lowercase. 
as considered as a different word and so on, right? So I mean, we'll need to do a lot of processing. We'll be using a specific library for that, an NLP library, and I'll cover, cover that in detail. And basically, once we have the text clean, we will build a matrix where the rows are the SMSs and the columns are the different words that we have identified. And what we will have, it's basically for each SMS, for each row, we will have the frequency or the number of times that a given word has appeared for that specific SMS. Okay, And basically, this is the matrix that we will be using to train and test the naive base model. For this example, because I really want to make sure that I explain everything really well, I'm not going to be writing it in our studio. It has been tested, okay? It ha I mean, all the code works, so if you have any issues, let me know, but everything is working. So just make sure that you first understand my explanation and then try it yourselves. Remember that this is the last part of this class. <clears throat> so the SMS spam CSV file, Basically, you can check this structure, but you will see that it's... Um, let me just show that, okay? I, I wouldn't use RStudio anymore, but let me just show you how the data set looks like. Something like this. So we have, for each SMS, we have whether it's ham or spam. Okay, this is the label and this is the SMS. We have exactly 5,559 different SMSs with its own label. Okay. So <clears throat> the first thing that we need to do as usual, okay, is that we are going to convert um, the um, spam or ham um, name to a factor, okay? This is just going to be a factor that we're going to be using as a label for the night base classifier. You can do that change. And then basically, as I was saying before, the, the spam SMS or spam filter that we are building is going to be um, using the text of the SMSs. And so when we use text, as you can imagine, there are a lot of things that we need to take care of before even using that to train our model. This might actually um, be, um, come in handy for many of your projects, especially those who are focusing on doing things like, for example, sentiment analysis. And the library that allows uh, us to do all that processing is uh, the TM library in R. So fortunately, you know, when we need to clean the stop words, when we need to transform all the uppercase into lower cases and so on, those are things that we don't need to implement ourselves because there's already functions in R that do that, that do that and all the functions are in a library called TM. The way TM works is that first you need to define a corpus. It's called that, that's typical uh, in a natural language processing research. So the corpus is basically the set of documents that you have for your classification problem. Okay, so um, the TM library has a package called corpus, and basically um, what you need to do is to build a corpus out of the data that we have. So SMS raw dollar text basically represents the text column of each um, SMS and what we are doing is just taking that and creating the corpus. So SMS corpus is going to be all the text that we have for every single SMS that we have. Okay, <clears throat> what are we going to do exactly? So we're going to remove all the upper cases, we are going to remove all the numbers, all these stop words, things like to, and, but, we're going to remove all the punctuation signs. And once all these are eliminated, we're going to clean all white spaces. Why? Because remember that, you know, what we will do is basically take each independent word in the SMS and build a probability um, of that word being associated to a spam or to a non-spam SMS. Okay, so we want to make sure that if we are talking about uh, Apple with a capital um, letter or without a capital, a capital letter, it's modeled as the same thing in the model. So in order to avoid that, we basically put everything to lowercase and that's it. Numbers are typically very messy. Stop words in general do not represent anything. So something like to and but will probably appear equally in both spam and non-spam SMSs. And so we want to clean them. And as I was saying, uh, the TM library has a function called TM map that basically has as input the corpus where you want to apply the function and then whatever you want to do. So for example, in the first case, we want to save in corpus clean the SMS corpus that we have, but converting all letters to lowercase. 
we want to remove the numbers, we want to remove the stop words, so the tm map function, what it does is that if you write remove words, you have to specify then what words you want to remove. So you can specify your own words or you can just say stop words, which is a library of stop words that tm has defined. We're going to remove punctuation and we're going to strip white spaces. Again, those are things that have already been implemented and they are in the tm library, so you don't need to worry about them, you just need to execute those commands. And you can examine again the corpus to see exactly how it looks like. The next thing, as I was saying, I mean, <clears throat> the way naive um, base uh, classifier is going to be built is basically computing the probability of each word being associated or not to a given spam um, SMS, spam message. Okay, so what we need to do is basically we need to create um, a matrix basically where the rows are the messages and the columns are the words. Okay, what we need to do is for each single SMS, we need to determine um, how many times each different word appears. Okay, so the numbers that we will see in the matrix are going to tell us mm, in this SMS the word apple appears two times, the word uh, buy appears one time, and the word mm, people appears one time. Okay, and everything else will be zero. As you can imagine, these matrices are going to be super sparse because the SMSs might have 20 different words and all the words that we are considering as columns are going to be the words from all the SMSs. So in general, they're going to be really, really sparse. We'll see how to, how to solve that too. <clears throat> so fortunately, there's also um, another command called document term matrix that allows us to do that. Okay, so you can execute it over the clean corpus that we have computed, the corpus that does not have white spaces, punctuation signs, and so on. And you will see that the result from that is a matrix where the rows are the SMSs and the columns are the different words. Okay, and each uh, cell in the matrix basically it's a counter that represents the number of times that the word in a given column has been observed in that specific SMS. Once we have that, I mean, we basically have um, our training, uh, we basically have our training data set or our, our complete corpus, we can define our training and testing data sets. Okay, so with the metrics that we have, we can define that 75% of the SMSs are going to be used to train the model and 25% of the SMSs are going to be used to test the model. Because the SMSs are completely unordered, we don't need to create any uh, random uh, random number generator or anything like that to randomly um, select the samples, but rather because they are completely unordered, we can just pick the top 75% from the data set and save it as training data, and the, the remaining 25% save it as testing data. Okay. And after doing the splitting, it's important to check that the proportion of, of spam and non-spam uh, SMSs is the same. So here, what these commands are doing is both for the raw SMSs, for the document term matrix, and for the clean corpus, we are basically taking the first approximately 4,000 SMSs, that's going to be the training data set, and the last uh, 1,500 SMSs, that's going to be the testing data set. And the reason why we do this for both the document term matrix, the raw messages, and the corpus clean is because we are going to need to access Depending on what is it that we are computing, we are going to need to access different information. And so uh, we want to make sure that whenever we access element, say, 5, we are accessing element 5 across the different data structures. So let me give you an example. Um, <clears throat> the document term matrix does not contain the label as of whether an SMS is a spam or not, right? So sometimes we'll be accessing the SMS number 1500 in the in the document term matrix and we want to know what its label is okay so then that's the reason why we create the SMS raw train and raw test because we'll be able to access that 1500 element and make sure that it's the same and make sure that we have the label for that element and again, I mean, this is customary and this is also highly relevant for your project. So whenever you have a data set, typically we divide it into training and testing. Training is 75, the proportion is 75, 25. The largest proportion also always goes to the training. It can also be 80, 20, 60, 40, but the typical, you know, is 75, 25. 
And then you can also check that the proportion of spam and non-spam is similar. So if you check, you know, what's the proportion of spam in the training data set or of spam in the testing set, you'll see that the proportion is quite similar and of non-spam, meaning that whatever you will use for the training, the testing data won't be a surprise for the model because, you know, more or less the proportion is similar. As I mentioned before, from all the SMSs that we've used to model to, to define the document term matrix, we have around 7,000 different features or words in the matrix, and it's highly sparse. And obviously, as you can imagine, all these words will not be significant in terms of the classification. Okay, so we're going to run an extra filter here that basically says that if a word appears less than five times, um, less than that, that five times, I mean, less the, it appears in less than five SMSs, we are going to eliminate that word. We're going to eliminate that column from the documenter matrix. We don't want to consider it. Okay, it's probably not significant with respect to the classification. So what we do is that there, there is a function called find freak terms, which finds frequent terms, as you can imagine. So we're going to be looking in the training data set in the document term matrix. We're going to be looking for all the um, terms that have at least five words. Okay. And we're going to create a dictionary with that. So SMS dict basically creates a dictionary. It's just a vector that contains all the elements, all the words that appear at least in five SMSs. And then what we do is that um, we basically modify the SMS training data set in such a way that the uh, document term matrix is going to contain all the columns that appear in the list. Okay, so all the words that do not appear in the, in the list are going to be eliminated from the document term matrix. And by doing that, instead of having 7,000 features, 7,000 words, now we have 1,200 different words. So we, are, we have minimized considerably the model. Okay, so now that we have the data set pretty much clean and that we have mm, computed the training and the testing sets, and that we have also cleaned not only the SMSs but also the words in terms of frequency, we are ready to you know, do some preparations for the naive base classifier. One of the things that we need to do is to transform the count of times a word appears into a yes or a no. Okay? Basically, because the naive base classifier that we are building is a binary classifier, so either the word is going to appear in the SMS or not. We are not interested at least for this model, we are not interested in the number of times it, it appears. We just want to see which words are associated to a spam and which words are not associated to a spam SMSs. <clears throat> so what we do is that we basically apply, uh, we use the function apply, which allows us to apply a function to all the rows or all the columns on a given matrix. So how does that work? We create a function, the convert counts, and that's a way you can create a function that might also be important for your projects, okay? So you put the number of the function, in this case convert counts, and then you define that it's a function of x and you put uh, all the code that is going to be executed by that function. Functions are really important because when you have something that you want to repeat multiple times, say you want to, um, for each column in your matrix, you want to... Um, now you want to change the values to 1, and then you want to add a random number there, okay? And you want to do that for each row, you can do a for loop, but maybe you can also define a function and, you know, let the function do it across all rows. So in this case, what we're doing, the convert counts function, it's basically saying if x is larger than 0, put a 1, otherwise put a 0, okay? And then basically it's a factoring the values um, 0 and 1 into labels no or yes. Okay, so it's doing a couple of transformations. Look at the value that's in the matrix. If it's larger than 0, you know, it's a counter, the word, the word that has appeared more than once, or once at least, put a 1. If it has never appeared, put a 0. And then what we're going to do is convert the 1s to yeses and the zeros to noes. Okay, and then in order to apply that, to all the columns on both training and testing data, what we do is that we use the function apply, as I said. So we apply to both the SMS train and the SMS test data sets. We apply the convert counts function. 
And at the end of this process, what we will have is the same um, documenter matrix that we've been using, but basically, instead of having numbers in each entry, we will have yes and no labels. And at this point, we have the matrix ready to do some training and testing, okay? I mean, we have a matrix that has, you know, the features that we think are relevant because it's not small counts and we have eliminated uh, stop words and punctuation signs and so on. And we have created the training and the testing data set. So we are ready to create the night based model and to test it. In order to do that, we're going to use the library E1071. As usual in R, there are uh, many libraries and many functions that allow us to do the same things. Okay, so for every type of classifier that I will describe in this course, you will definitely find more than one implementation. You are free to use the implementations that I describe here. You can also use other implementations. It's up to you. In our case, in this case, for this example, we are going to use the library E1071, which contains a naive base function, which is really easy to execute. Okay, so it's naive base, then you have to put the training data set and the labels. So we write naive base, SMS train, and then SMS row train dollar type, which represents the label, the labels associated to each training sample. What the SMS classifier will have here is basically the naive base classifier that we have built. That classifier will have, for each of the words that appear in all the training samples, it will have a probability of being a spam, a spam SMS, what's the probability of that word appearing, and being a non-spam, what's the probability of that word appearing. And then we can use that model to basically predict. So we have the SMS test data set, and the predict function as input receives the first, um, the first variable is the classifier itself that we have built, the naive base classifier, and the second variable is the testing set. So once we train and test the naive base classifier, we can use, as in uh, as we explained, you know, in the previous examples in this class, we can use the confusion matrix. We are in a classification setting. We are determining, in this case, a binary classification. Is it a spam or is it not spam, right? And so we can report the accuracy of our naive base classifier using a confusion matrix. As explained earlier, um, in this case, the column here predicted represents the values that we have predicted, the classes that we have predicted, if it's a spam or not. And then this row here is represented the actual, you know, labels that we have in the testing data set to see how good our model is. A couple of important results that we can see here, if we look at this box here, these are the SMS, the text messages that were predicted as being a spam that are actual spam messages and it's 82.5 percent so 82.5 percent of the mm, testing um, uh, data points that we have in the data set were correctly classified as a spam okay and so the remaining 17.5 percent 32 samples were incorrectly classified as not being a spam when they are actually spam okay so this is a pretty good classifier that we have built okay um, remember that um, at the beginning we said how we are considering words to be um, basically fully independent, like probabilities of words co-appearing um, are completely independent, and we said that that's a big assumption. Well, despite that big assumption, this spam classifier is not doing is not doing very badly. Okay, it's actually doing pretty well. And then a way of improving this, as we also mentioned during the, the theory part before, it could uh, happen that, you know, um, data or words that we have in our, in our testing data set were not present in our training data set. And so the classifier, the night based classifier might not exactly know what probabilities to assign, assign to those words, right? And so what we can do is to, um, we can add a Laplace estimator. And the way we do that is just by when we run the naive base command, we can just say, okay, Laplace equals one, meaning when you are training the model, please can add a Laplace estimator so that we are also taking into account maybe words that, you know, will not necessarily appear in the training data set, but that might appear in the testing data set. Okay. Uh, we run the predict command again for the testing and we can compute the um, confusion matrix again. And what happens? What do we observe? Well, in this case, as you can see here, what we observe is that if we look at the number of messages that are spam that have been correctly predicted as a spam, 
This number is 89.6%. It has increased from the 82.5% that we had without the Laplace estimator. What this means is that by adding a Laplace estimator, our, our model has improved by approximately a 7% in the identification of uh, spammy SMS messages. And as a result, obviously, the um, the uh, messages, the spam SMSs that have been incorrectly classified as not being spammy has also decreased to around 10%. Okay, so this is all for today's class. Um, next week we'll be covering decision trees, random forests, both the theory as well as different examples in R.